I'm just making an explainer video for cyclomatic complexity for software architecture this year. Uh, I gave students this example over here of a set of code and the idea is we want to compute the cyclomatic complexity for it and we're going to have to construct the code graph, uh, the uh, control flow graph I should say, to do that. When we're making the control flow graph, we've got these rules we're following where nodes in the graph are going to correspond to indivisible groups of commands and then whenever we have a control flow structure we're going to have to think of how to handle it. So if it's an if, we're going to have at least a couple edges jutting off of a node to represent that if statement and that possibility. If it's a loop, we're going to have to have some kind of cycle in our graph. And it's kind of optional really, but we're going to put in start and end nodes as well, just to make it clear where the start and end of the, the, uh, the program is. And the equation to compute the complexity is m is equal to e minus n plus 2. And that's for the case where we're just modeling either one function or one module. So let's just make our graph for this code over here to the left. And what we want to do is we want to identify the indivisible groups of instructions because those are all going to be one node. And then we've also got the control flow structures, which we're going to have to handle in some kind of smart way too. So if we go over here, like this is an indivisible block in the sense that like this has to execute when this executes. It's one indivisible block of instructions that will always execute together. So we can just kind of like highlight this, I guess, just to make it kind of clear where these indivisible blocks are. Like here's one here and same thing here, same thing here and same thing here and also just above it in this else here. We've got another one. This is Python code. Python uses um, spacing to delineate blocks, essentially. Uh, in other languages, you see the, the open squiggly bracket, closed squiggly bracket. But okay, that, so that's our divisible blocks. We got one, two, three, four, five, six of these. And then we've got these control structures here. So we've got an if, and inside of that if, we have another if with an else if branch and an else branch. And then within the else branch, we've got a while here. So we might want to highlight these as well. And maybe we can highlight them different colors just to make it clear like what is what. So we'll say blue and blue for this else branch here. And then this if else if here, we can kind of make this its own color as well. Maybe not that kind of green. Uh, but we'll just kind of like highlight it just that way we can kind of kind of keep it, keep it clear in our heads uh, what is what here. And then we've got this while loop inside of it. Okay, so all right, so now it's kind of clear at least somewhat what is what here. So first thing, let's start up our graph here. I'll just drag a node out here. I'm gonna hit control to make it easier to make it a, a circle as I drag this around. And I'll make this our start and end here. So I'll say start red. I'll just copy this. So that way they're the same size. Start and I'll say end is, we made that blue, so I'll make it blue here. Just for consistency sake, why not? And then let's kind of model this thing. So first thing we've got here is this first block of instructions. So we'll drag in a direction here or arrow here. And maybe I'll make this like arrow a little bigger, not that big. And then let's drag in some, or let's uh, start making our nodes here. So here's our first sort of block of instructions here. And I might want to connect this though it doesn't totally matter. Um, and I'll make this blank. So that's our first set of instructions here. And then we've got this if statement that we've got a model here. And this is going to be interesting because now we're going to have a node that is either going to uh, go in one way or the other in terms of the edges coming off of it. So we've actually got something interesting happening in terms of control flow. This arrow here, I probably want to fix this because I don't really want to have uh, an arrow on each line. The control flow is going in a direction here. Um, so I got to fix this or just drag another one out here just for brevity's sake. I'll do that. <laughs> there. Okay. I fixed it. I must have added two there. So, okay. So let's, let's work on this. If now we'll make another node, copy that. That's going to be like our, if make another arrow, connect that to this one connect that to this one. But now this if statement is going to go in one of two directions, either the if branch or the else branch. So I'll do the else branch 
over here. And I'll just drag it over here. Oops. And I will get another node here. And what this will do here is this will represent, this node here is going to represent this situation here. And this node here is representing our if, where, you know, if this condition is the case, it's going to do one thing or the other thing. And in this case, in the else branch case, it's going to go over here uh, and run this code here, which corresponds to this here. Then we've got to handle this case here of what if the if is true? So that's going to be another node here or another edge, I should say. So I'll put this one here, put this one going out here somewhere. And what this one's going to do is it's going to have not just uh, one node here, like this else branch, like this, this, this one here is just gonna have this one else branch and that's it. Uh, this one here is going to be more complicated. The, the instructions that are going to execute when this if case is true is going to be an actual if else if else branch. So we're going to have a node there. It's going to represent that control structure and that control structure can do three things. Either it's an, either this is true. And if it is, we do this. Otherwise, this is true, and if that's the case, we do this. So we can represent those two pretty easily. We'll just say uh, here and here, we'll make some arrows. And this can represent uh, those two cases there. So we'll say that is, you know, this case here. We'll say that. The next case here is this node here. And then this else case is going to be a little bit special because it's going to have another control structure inside of it. And that control structure is going to be a while loop. So let's first just put a node there. First, we'll just get a, a node happening. And here is our while loop node but with the while loop it's a control structure and what it does is it is going to do this some amount of times and in contrast to the ifs that we've been kind of representing with these you know arrows jutting off in different directions a loop is going to have a cycle and in this case here the cycle is going to be pretty simple it's going to be back and forth between one individual group of instructions but it is going to have a cycle so we've got to represent that too so I've got to put one more node out there and I'll put it there. And then I can just kind of have a couple arrows to represent the cycle back and forth between the while loop and, or the, the, the different iterations of the while loop here. Cause oops, this isn't the prettiest graph, but it's not bad either. Okay. All right, so there's there's that model now. So like the while condition is gonna happen, it's gonna execute this code or it's not, and when it's done, it's done. Okay, now going back to this else case here now, um, once this is finished executing, once this else case in this first if statement is finished executing, it's gonna execute this block of instructions next. So we can model that, put another block of instructions in there. And we'll put an arrow in there from there to there. And then when that block of instructions is done, the program's done. So we're just going to put another one more arrow in there. Okay, there you go. And then if you look at the, the if case here, the same thing happens. So like when this is done and when this is done and when this is done, the next thing it's going to execute is this block of instructions here. So we can actually draw arrows from the ends of the if, uh, different if situations here into the, uh, this final block of instructions there. So put that in there and one couple more.
and one more. Okay, so maybe not perfectly pretty, but that this now represents, in terms of control flow, what's going on over here. And then the equation we had to use was m is equal to e minus n plus 2, where e is the number of edges and n is the number of nodes. And so let's just plug that in. Let's just figure out what that is. We'll just say m is equal to, and it was e minus n plus 2. So we'll say e minus n plus 2. And let's count the edges of nodes. So we've got edges, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. For nodes, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 plus 2. And that would give us 5, right? So, and that's the correct answer for this. Now, one thing with this... Uh, example here is I said in class that cyclomatic complexity uh, it can be the control flow graphs can be slightly different but still accurate and that's why if you look at this online you might find people constructing them slightly differently um, so for example with this if else if else branch one way we could model this is we said that like we're going to handle the three possibilities of this control structure via this one node so this one node and these edges they're representing the different possibilities of this control structure here, the three different possibilities. And this models it accurately. But another way we could do it is we could say that, you know, this is one conditional that's going to run. And then this one may possibly run. And from this conditional, we're either going to have this block of instructions execute or this block of instructions execute. And you could actually model this slightly differently. So one way we could look at this is we could say, and I may have to disconnect things here a bit, but one thing we could do is we could look at it this way and we could say, okay, after we get into this if branch here, we do this first conditional. If this is the case, if this conditional is true, this here, this node of instructions is what's going to be next in the control flow. Otherwise, what's going to happen is there's going to be another conditional. And we can just say, we could represent that uh, with a node here. I don't know why I got smaller on here. We could represent that with a node here. And we could say, well, the other possibility is that that other conditional is going to execute next. And then from there, it's either going to do one of two things. So you could, you could represent this if, else if, else structure like this too. And you'd, you'd have like a first if case. If that's not the case, we have another condition that's being evaluated here. And that's either going to do this or it's going to go here. Now, the thing is, what we just did was we just changed the amount of nodes and edges. So we added, uh, you know, an additional node, but we also added additional edges. And when we did that, it's actually going to work out to the, the same number. So if we just count things again, like if we count the edges here, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 edges. So we got 15 edges. And then the amount of nodes, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 nodes. And we end up with 5 again. So just because we represented it slightly differently, we came out with the same complexity score. And because it's not 100% defined how to compute a control flow graph in an objective way, you know, variations like this, even some cases that might lead to a variation in this, the score, I accept, but it does have to make sense. There does have to be, a, 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 you know, a logical translation of the code to a control flow graph like this. But anyways, I just thought I'd post this. I hope this helps. Thanks.